So, we're back. That's a good thing. Uh, so I'm recording this now at the same time, so uh, should this go off, don't worry about it, it's still going to go on. 46 minutes left, as you can see, very little has changed at all. I've also moved my router, so hopefully that helps too. But uh, as you can see, there's not an awful lot of damage being done, nor shots being fired or anything, so that is just how it is. And... Uh, at least I didn't have to talk for uh, five more minutes while this is going on. So should the stream go down, it will be down. I will just record the rest of it and um, get it up. So sadly, after, you know, 30-odd uh, minutes, nothing has happened. But uh, let's bring you back up to date. Red has bypassed that proxy mine. Yellow has very sneakily uh, been able to open up the dial. Uh, so Fan can probably start going after these ships. Green has already turned in and uh, probably will bank to the left and then red can uh, come in after the green one and start getting guns on target. As for Matthew, well, this is quite an interesting conversation. Uh, Gargor has decided to um, go around to the left-hand side, as has Jostro. Tarani's okay and Lando and Zuvio are in an all right position, in an all righty position. So let us see where we end up. And as I said in the, in the past broadcast, that uh, things should be working out okay. Uh, I've now moved from upstairs in my nice comfy chair to now standing up in my kitchen. So what we streamers do to try and bring new games from the XTC, We're, we, we, we really do try, you know, we do. But we shall see. At the minute, I am... Waiting to see where we are genuinely at in this game. I'd love to see some shots so we can actually give you a bit of decent commentary. So uh, three quarters of an hour left to go out of the 75. Sadly, no engagement, but that is okay. That is absolutely fine. Uh, these ships, when they do engage, it will be blood on blood. It will, they will choose violence. And both players are ready to go, so uh, Gargor will go first at I-0, hard one to the left. Missing the world's tiniest asteroid and takes an evade, which is a very good thing for something at I-0 to do. Fan starts moving the K-wings in, all taking focuses, liking where we're at, hard to in there from the blue. The two forward from the green, the one bank from yellow, looking good. Let us see where Machu is. So he has decided, yep, maybe time to start taking some pot shots at some ships. K Turner from Tarami, get herself a stress, but uh, at this minute, this point in time, absolutely fine. We'll be able to do a blue maneuver to get rid of that. So then. It's completely up to you, Matthew, who he wants to move first. Uh, Zuvio does uh, his lovely manoeuvre, which will give him the stress. And uh, does have um, contrabands, so may crack them at some stage. Lando, his manoeuvre ends up bumping into the front of the tug, which is, which is okay. So, at A4, everything on the right-hand side of your screen gets the opportunity to fire first. And if there is no shot from Gargor, uh, that's not Gargor, that is Jostro. Uh, I think probably the only shots we might get could be from maybe only just green. I think yellow is out. Let's have a look and we will find out. So no shot from blue. There is a double obstructed shot. Um, uh, lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of dice being pulled out. So uh, three die from the first K-Wing. Doesn't need a bod. Two hits and a crit. Five die back. Range three into this. Uh, we'll spend the evade token. Lose the shield. Uh, if you're going to take a crit 
shield is kind of important that you take instead of anything else. So let us add that to the overlay. Hooray, something to do. Yellow, unobstructed, range three. Fan rolls the dice. Will 110% spend that focus for three hits. And no mod there. That is hull damage going in to uh, Gargor. So half points straight away. First turn of engagement, first blood to the Netherlands. And uh, let's see if uh, Gargoyle can take a shot back. Probably only being the yellow, which it is. So uh, two on two. K-Wings only have one green dice. That's pretty good from the Frenchman. And takes a shield on yellow. So not so bad. Not so bad. Let me find the yellow. There we go. Right, second from the top. So, thank you for continuing uh, to keep watching. Um, as I say, I am recording and streaming at the same time now to ensure that this game in its entirety gets recorded. Should the stream go down, it will be on the YouTube channel of the Tauntaun Squadron. As soon as the game finishes, I will have it spliced and up and ready to go within... 30 minutes, it'll be up and ready to go. So we're now back to days. And I quite like where both players are right now. I think Red's in a fantastic spot. Um, not in a good spot to use Sabine, but uh, Barrage Rockets out the front, kind of good. I am not going to be start marking off the Barrage Rockets or anything like that at all. Um, don't want to mess around with this too much. I've got a really good connection right now, so let us just keep it as it is. Choices. Now, the green K-Wing can probably do a three forward, but will probably most likely be blocked. The yellow K-Wing will probably just do a one to the left, a little bank, just go around there. And I assume that uh, the red one will maybe do a one over there as well, getting into the fight. Blue being completely untouched and hasn't fired anything, could realistically uh, just do a one forward, but then would that land it on the rock? Possible, possible. Very tight, I'm sure that's the uh, one that he's most worried about. The other three pretty much do themselves okay, doesn't want to land in any rocks. So let's, let's hope for uh, the Netherlands, if that doesn't happen, that would be excellent if uh, things remain as they do. Uh, for France, well, they can take their pick on where they want to go next. They've got every single dial, even Lando, all open to be able to go and do stuff. So, handy all around. So, let us see where we're at. I will, can guarantee you that maybe Blue would, might even just go left. Bank one to the left, avoid that rock, and then come through the next one. So highly possible. Maybe get into the back there of Tarani. There's one thing that fan has to remember is that bullseye thing from uh, Tarani. You do not want to be taking damage in all your ships. Where are we at? Looking like most of the dials are now done. He knows what he's doing with Blue, fam. And it looks pretty much like Matthew has got all his stuff organized. Pretty decent. So I think this could actually be a turn where we're going to see a great deal more shooting. Uh, more barrage rockets. Not too many things coming out of the front from Matthew. Um, it's only a 14 point game for the half there on Gargor, so that is his easily his cheapest ship. It's a nice little filler and a blocker. A lot of very good lists in X-Wing past have had very low initiative things like uh, tiny A-Wings and uh, things like that just to annoy and harass the opposition. So I understand why that is in the list. But uh, five different ships really, really like uh, Matthew's list. So let us see where we are all at. Looks like the table here is also quite stable. So hopefully, fingers crossed, luck of the Irish, that it stays 
where it is. So uh, frame rate seemingly pretty good, ping not bad. So let us see where Manu puts his little I zero and see where they're at. Uh, let's check out the dials from fan. I think we're good to go on the other side as well. Matthew doing exactly the right thing. And this is top level X-Wing. These two players, very well respected in both countries, hence being picked for their XTC teams to represent their country. And to be honest, this is what the XTC is. You would be delighted uh, to get picked uh, to represent your country. Now that is an interesting maneuver that is interesting i would much is he i assume this is a too hard to the right it has to be a too hard to the right and i think that's what they're talking about obviously as a streamer i i, I can't get in to what's what's going on so he's double checking his dials again and i will assume that that has been a misclick and that is not a too hard to the left it's a too hard to the right which it now is so uh, fantastic sportsmanship there from fan. So let's see where the rest of these move up. So just the forward uh, from uh, this being carried red K-wing. I like that. Yellow really should do the one bank. And then now has Gargor bind the rights. That's pretty good. Also enough because of that medium sized base um, will uh, be able to do as much as is humanly possible to uh, get in there. Green has bumped, but we'll get other things. And does indeed take the blue bank to the left, going through that very tight asteroid field indeed. So that is all of the Netherlands ships. Time for France to retaliate. And there is a two bank in from Jostero. Probably going to focus. Does Tarani, I think, really needs to bank in here and try and get a bullseye shot in and that looks like she's got either or in uh probably gonna fire at green um gets rid of the stress because that is a blue maneuver so can take an action takes the focus zuvio i expect will go next and to get out of lando's way does um a little straight which should, I would have assumed, gotten rid of the stress. Yeah. So ignore the stress token on the front of uh, Zuvio. That is not there. That is why there is a, a focus there. And Lando just being Lando. Just flying around and helping people out. Because Lando's just an, a super annoyance. Now, if Gargor is an annoyance, Lando is just ridiculous at being able to do things for other people. And I do like these ships, you know. The Kimigala is a version 1 ship. So is the ship that Lando is in. So it's kind of handy. While he is deciding what is going on, I'll quickly jump into chat. I don't want to do too much. Uh... Thank you all for watching. I uh, appreciate it a lot to come out of there. So precious little damage has been done, to be fair. As Matthew decides what action Lando is going to perform. But rest assured, whatever it is, sadly Lando doesn't have a shot. But one, two, three, three of them do. And even Gargor will get a shot into possibly yellow, but definitely blue. So going to go for the uh, coordinate. So let's see who's getting something nice. Will there be some sort of, will it go, let's see who this goes to. Look at the size of the range three around that tiny ship. Absolutely huge. You put that in the middle uh, the next time you're playing on TTS and just hit the range three for a target lock and it takes up so much of the board. Yeah, it's actually quite further than most people think. 
So a big, big choice here for Matthew. Uh, only down, as I say, a handful of points, or a couple of handfuls. But uh, in this game, that's not going to really make that much of a difference because there is going to be a huge amount of pew pewing about to happen. So. Every single one of his ships are in that bubble. So could maybe pass something over even to Gargor, try and keep him alive. So Chostero gets a target lock after all of that. So that's one decision made. Second decision to make is who to fire first. And I personally would go with Tirani. So let's look at this yellow bullseye line. Fits both. So an unobstructed in the blue. And unobs uh, an unobstructed in to yellow. I think these are going to be chosen to be obstructed be with them being uh, purple. So let's have a look. Once you're deciding what he wants to actually fire here with. I mean, it's a decision, but so that appears to be uh, another shield off uh, yellow, so we will add that to our lovely overlay. So just the one shield left. And there's also two off green. And now uh, we should see where we're at. So red and blue completely untouched. Two shields off green and yellow. And there, there's all the arcs in the world. So um, shot here from uh, spends that force for three uh, the focus for three hits blanks out completely into the hull of green it goes to damage into there so that and now down to just the four so with it being nine, that is five, that is 25 points to uh, France. And here we go with a, another shot. Uh, now I get spent for two hits. Yep, I agree with that. One die in return. Fan hits another blank that is green down to just the one. No, down to two. My apologies. There are a uh, one, two, three, four, five. Yes, he is down to one. So uh, let me get I was right the first time. So one away from full points, which uh, that warden is 49. Uh, two die shot into the red. And red takes both. So uh, fans greens failing quite badly at the minute. Uh, not getting any paint whatsoever. Uh, hit crit going in here. So... Yep, there we go. Hit crit will spend that target lock on Jostero for hit, hit crit. Green is dead. Green is out of there. Ends up with an ignominy of uh, a direct hit as well. Uh, complete explosion and an initiative kill uh, as well. We'll put that down to the bottom and we will t give you the score back at the end of this round of shooting green uh, reds slightly better but they have better sides and just like that there is two shields 
off uh, that's just uh, Tyranna so she's lost all her shields another hit crit so the hit and the crit and the crit is a fuel leak so Tarani loses both shields. Two hull and a fuel leak. Any more crits will set off something else. That is, get back here. Zuvio gets attacked. Spends the focus. No more incoming shots. Hit, hit, crit into Zuvio. Takes the shield. No shield. So one damage. And a second fuel leak in the Zuvio. Not halved, but that is pretty good going back. And is that the end of the shooting? I believe that it is. So, apart from Gargor, who gets an unobstructed range two shot into blue. Two dice from the little man. Oh, <laughs> Natty's two two hits so one's definitely going through and it wanted to be an evade but did not end up being an evade so blue down to one shield as well that was a heck of a round of shooting so just under 25 minutes to go Mathieu from France has destroyed 49 points by killing off green on the other hand Fan did not get any points at all and has destroyed 14. So it's a 35 point game in favor of France over the Netherlands. And we are back into the movement phase again. So things starting to heat up, 25 minutes to go. These guys really do know their lists and now it's getting tight because we now need to see where these K-Wings need to go. The sequel just disappear. Uh, it's already given up half. Or it could swing around and try desperately and try and get a bump onto either yellow or blue. Blue would probably be the easier one to do. Um, Tarani is in a fantastic spot to all start coming down. Zuvio is in a fantastic spot as well. Lando will be giving out all the target locks and actions of the world as long as he is within range. But we've seen how big the range 3 bubble is. In the meantime, Fan now needs to figure out where he needs to start putting stuff up. And it looks like we're about to get kicked off the table. So I'm going to try and get this back in again as soon as possible. Because it now looks like, oh, no, we're, we're balancing off. This is good. Come on, Fan. A better pipe required if people are going to stream you from all over the world and there's a lot of people watching so all good we are still in that's good because this is where this game is going to get interesting so to me because you have to be aware of where gargor is maybe a swing to the right from yellow even even just the bank could be quite good a bank from red to me seems completely logical uh, a one to the left a one to the right from the blue also seems kind of logical but we need to see where these guys actually are and as you can tell um it's forward facing so don't forget the thermals on the k-wings that's people forget about bombs and that's pretty much I'm sure Fan is quite happy with where he is right now. Uh, you can not only just drop one, you can drop two using the one and two template. So again, you roll and any damage that you take, that ship then suffers. So to be able to get in here and either fire barrage rockets off, but remember, systems phase, you could drop a bomb from blue, just the one, and see if it catches Gargor. Uh, you could also drop other bombs from the other K-Wings, but probably not going to catch too much, to be honest. Um, no 
no fuses as far as I am aware, but then in saying that, we've also got um, I don't even know where he's going to go with these. Tarani really wants a bullseye shot and does not want to land on that tiny little moustache asteroid. And Lando will probably just do a hard one in behind wherever she goes. So uh, excitement for this turn building. Looks like we have got everything up. Fan down 25% on his list. Uh, but the French showing just how good a team they already are. So all good, all over. Both players, I think, are set. Yep, Matthew tapping the table to say he's good to go. Fan is also good to go. So I uh, has has he done red? Let's have a look. Yes. So all of these are done. Gargar does the hard one. That's a good maneuver. Uh, takes his traditional um, evade token. Brilliant move. The three bank. And a focus. A too hard. I'm not sure if that has bumped. There is the bank in from red with uh, the Sabine crew in there too. And now it is all back down to Matthew. Has he blocked things off? Is he going to deny actions? We are soon going to see. But don't forget, Lando can still give an action that was hugely critical in the last round. That target lock had enough there to take out the green K. So let's see, it's a too hard. Makes that perfectly, Jostero. Absolutely fantastic move. May even have blue in arc, which is, if he has, that's a fantastic maneuver. And then all the rest here are all initiative force. So we'll just have to see in what order once he decides to put his stuff up in. Tarani's not going to get the additional damage that she got in the last round because you have to be within the round. Oh, decides to take a lock on blue. Is that is that the sign that he's got it? Or does he just not think anybody's shooting him? Because at this minute in time, he's going to take... I mean, he could be taking the thermal, but he'd be well gone by the time the thermals get dropped. But blue can certainly drop too try and catch a couple of these off guard. Lando now decides to uh, bank a right, checks his uh, bubble for his ability. So let us see what happens now. Do people get an evade or a barrel roll? And there is the barrel roll to the right from Tarani. Interesting choice. Has got the bullseye, but uh, has not moved yet. So it is uh, now range one for both ships. So that is a four die attack. Uh, Zuvio, I don't believe has moved yet. So there is the bump. Tarani will get a shot into yellow. So fantastically well predetermined bump there and Zuvio super move is at range one and will there be any level of Zuvio shenanigans let's see what Machu has got up his sleeve uh, to see what is going on with and just in an attempt because Zuvio literally has a one hole before he is halved, so three for death, and will obviously be wanting to fire into yellow uh, when given the chance. So Lando, obviously unmodded, uh, is going to take something quite hard from blue. Um, so Tarani to shoot first. It is a Is he going to shoot at Gargor? Is that is that the plan? Uh, 
Okay, so shooting at his own ship. Then as we can read, um, let us read what uh, Tarani is. If you perform an attack, each enemy ship in your bullseye suffers one damage unless it removes a green token. Uh, when you perform an attack, if the defender is in your uh, bullseye, defense dice cannot be modified using green tokens. So, Blue um, has had to give up uh, his focus uh, to not take damage. I found just looking at uh, the rule there. Just double checking the overlay to ensure that everything is as it should be. Uh, specifically that um, the yellow has uh, now lost its final shield, which you can see on the right. So let's see where where we are and who Matthew is actually going to fire into. So all good. We are pretty good to go. And it is going to be a barrage. That's not a barrage, is it? Oh, it's a cluster missile. Of course it's a cluster missile. And there is the shot. Bit of a trail mix. Hit focus blank. And losing that puts one damage into yellow. So getting close to being halved there. Just your oh, does he have the range one hand? He does. This could be key. This could actually turn the game totally in the favor of our France. Four dice into one. Two focus, a crypt, and a blank will re roll all three as he took the target lock. And, well, I mean, that's pow, pow, kapow, kaboom. Because that is two hits and two crits going into blue. Blue gets a direct hit. And I'm pretty sure that that is almost dead. So, one, two, three, four, five. The last one is a hull breach. So, down to just one can Lando take blue off the board? No, no, he can't. But what a hit! And the whole bridge pretty much a no brainer, nothing really happening there. Horrible to get early, but the direct hit equally as bad. Zuvio into yellow. Unbelievably gets two hits. One green dice back for Fan from the yellow. Uh, rolls a good and high. Doesn't do him any good at all. That is three damage total. So two more into yellow. What a game this is becoming. So just three hole left on the yellow K. And that is one more hit, and that's evaded. So, stays alive. And Fan needed that bit of squiggle, because that has kept that ship in the game. Now, do we go half points, or, or try and kill another ship? The uh, things are out the side. Jostero is right there at range one. So is Gargor. Uh, the other two... He's bumped into Tyrannic. The other one not in arc. So a big decision here for Mr. Langolin. Uh, a top eight at Worlds in 2016. Lost to Nan Torfs. So been playing this game a very long time. Uh, so knows all the tricks from uh, the ships. And see where he goes into. He hasn't pinged anything, but I'm sure if we get hits, we will soon see. And oh lord, that's ridiculously unfortunate. Uh, 
So a downtown shot into Tarami, uh, three into one. Fires the missile off, gets three hits. Needs a squiggle, gets that squiggle. Um, so another one, please. And that is two more damage into Tarani. Tarani now in a bit of trouble. And uh, here, out the side, into Tarani again. Not much hole left on this ship. And because of her ability keeps her alive, here is the final round of shooting. Range one, so this is three into one. Blue is probably not long left for this galaxy. But doesn't have a focus. Huge let off as he went for his evade. And there you go. Definitely the thing that he would put on an I-0 ship as an action. So where are we in the game? Ten minutes to go. Masu has destroyed 99 points. Fan increased his points total to 42, but France leads the Netherlands by 57 points. So I hope you guys are enjoying this. I am thoroughly enjoying this. I may have to start streaming down here as my internet connection seems a hell of a lot better. So this is good. I'm glad you're actually getting to watch it live. I do know that a fan definitely wanted this much streamed and have it live so you guys can see it right here. So it is a pleasure to bring this to you. 10 minutes to go, what are the wind conditions? Well, it's very, very simple. Fan needs to destroy the ship. And at the minute, that has not happened at all. So he needs to take somebody off. There are still five ships flying the flag of red, white and blue for France. And there is only three ships, one of which has only got one hull left, and that is the blue K. The dials on the K wings are not fantastic. So bumps and blocks, the order of the day, I would assume for uh, Machu. And all guns on target. Tarani has to die. Uh, she's very, very close to death. So if we just look at the overlay for one little second, uh, Jostero is absolutely tickety-boo. Like, he is just, he's fine. He is absolutely fine. There he is. Not a thing on him. Not a thing. And as we go down, Tarani, three left. Massive, massive ship, three hull still to go. Three hull still left on Zuvio. And uh, Lando, untouched. Now let's look at the other side where the blue um who has lost that shield i have no idea why that shield is still up there so apologies for that very hard to try and keep them all at the same stage so the one hole like we've been saying through the cast just the one only three left on yellow now the good news for fan is that red's practically untouched yes it's lost a couple of shields but can do quite a lot with these barrage rockets and they've got lots i will also expect an absolute ton of thermals coming out of blue a ton of thermals coming out of yellow you've got them you pay four points for each of them that is 16 points of this list they are getting dropped no matter what happens whether they roll any damage or not but they will definitely definitely be getting dropped um blue has got a fantastic chance here to get more damage in and then maybe a really big sweep from the red sabine carrier just to see what happens. I may even drop one just in case Suvio goes left, but Suvio will probably just go forward. Uh, it's not really what you would call a super extensive ship, Suvio's tug, so we will have to see. It's, um, it's, it's not the best. It could even reverse, because Suvio is no longer stressed as far as I can see, so he could reverse. Zuvio so could also drop another proxy, which is ridiculous. He can also fire it forward to catch the yellow. So there's an absolute ton of triggers that these two players need to think of before they even begin to think of what their final maneuvers and where they, in an ideal world, want their ships to be. But Fan needs to take one off. What Mathieu needs to do is to maybe just run with the ones that are in a bit of trouble. 
and neither of those ships are Jostro or Lando currently. So, uh, Machi hasn't even begun to do his dials. Not yet. Um, as you can see, one dial has been set, that is Lando. The other three are getting done now. So, let's uh, see where we end up. As I said, under the 10 minutes to go. I'll just have a look at the game clock. There's uh, six minutes exactly left. Um, so, not even looking at the overlay chat. I'm not ignoring you. It's just this is actually a, a, a much closer game than what we're giving it credit for because this round could transform the fortunes of the Netherlands. So not, not a bad thing that both these players are taking their time. This is going to be the critical round of this game of X-Wing 2.0. So let us see. Does Zuvio reverse? How many bombs are going to be dropped? Can Tarani get more damage with a bullseye? All of these things we're about to find out in the next 120 seconds. Which, if that happens, this could probably be the final round of the game. So, good luck to both players. I hope their plans both come off. Um, it's been an excellent game. An awful lot at the start of the game that we... Um, we kind of missed uh was skirting around the outsides a whole lot of slams there was no shooting at all for the first 25 minutes um was that good or bad i suppose in the scale of things it really didn't make that much of a difference but let us say this is the round will prox be thrown by zuvio or will be dropped behind him will he reverse if he reverses, that's fantastic. But let, let's just see where we're at because all of this will happen in the systems phase once these boys have pinged the table. Let us hope everything stays up. God, I'm actually excited. I, I love watching good players play games. So I will go through the chat later. Uh, I think this, as it is completely critical, is is huge. And I don't even want to start looking at another screen. All my eyes are exactly what you're seeing on the screen, minus the overlay, because I'm in the game. Let's see if... No. Uh, so Tarani still not set. Looks like it's about to get set now, though. Three and a half minutes. This is 100% the last thing in the game. Oh, and what a game it's been. That means, very sadly, I can't remember off the top of my head uh, who's leading in this set. I do know that uh, France are 3-1 and uh, the Netherlands are 2-2 in uh, their first sort of games. So these two were the heavyweights like the, the, the pre-XTC favourites to get out of Group E and uh, the Netherlands need this win uh, to take them level uh, with the set wins with France with only one remaining set left, which is next week from Monday. I have to say it's been an amazing tournament so far. It's only getting better as the weeks go on as people really get to know what these lists can do. Uh, so yes, absolutely the last round. Uh, fan just double checking and doesn't want to be concerned about what's happening. Just double checking what Gargor does. So let me actually show you what that does. After you defend, each other ship at range zero suffers a crit. Huge. That's why it's in the middle of everything. Definitely going to be it. I mean, we're, we're almost out of time. Um, Tarani still not doing anything at all. Um, oh, I mean, there's so many options. There's so many options. So many things to block, so many things to drop, so many things they can go wrong and then we've all got to remember that this is a dice game and variance 
is a bloody big part of it. I'm just going to spin out here. It now looks like all five and all three remaining ships have now got their dials set. Let us see. Let us actually move in. That's about as close as I want to take it. Let's see where we go. Systems phase is ready to go. And here come all the bombs. Blue will drop a one. Blue will then drop one with the two template. So two. Uh, these are thermal detonators. Um, so don't don't be uh, worried about the color. Uh, the, the game essentially is over. Uh, there's the two from the yellow. You may as well drop the two from red as well. Just in case Zubio has decided to do something very silly indeed. But these will also go off last turn at no point in not dropping both. I would have dropped the second one as well. Oh, okay. So that is this. Zuvio then drops a proxy mine, which leads me to believe that Zuvio is going to try and block red. I don't think it's going to do anything, but here we go. Gargor, a white three bank, trying to get out of dodge. Now, will he get a shot? There are, that's the clock, that is the game over. Every single thing that now happens, these guys can now take their time with. So bear with. This is a hugely important game in Group E between two fantastic countries with excellent players. So uh, bear with both of these uh, pilots. Every single action now, even more critical than throughout the, the whole 75 minutes that uh, we've bought you this game. So will it be an evade or will it be anything else and to be fair i think the evade there is a perfect perfect choice so now fan gets to decide what's going to happen takes a focus uh, the side arcs there are left and right of the ships the same there with uh, blue, I'm going to actually just try and bump this down to see where they are. And yep, they are side to side. And at the minute, just like in the last round, uh, so is yellows. So hopefully we can maybe see where he is. The problem for Fan is he went to take a focus and is probably thinking of reversing front and rear his bow tie arc. Um, a kill on Tarani would be huge, huge, uh, should that go off. Remember, Tarani only needs to take three damage to die, and there's only the one hull green of aid. Takes the focus. A two hard to the left, which does not bump. Fantastic flying there, getting well away from everything else, and takes the focus so that is all fan can do apart from roll dice now it's the time for france to shine a two hard from jostero that will keep blue in arc so blue may not even get the chance to fire uh there's three hull left on uh the yellow k The problem is, where do these other ships now go? So we know where Jostero has gone. And again, uh, as he has done most of the game, Matthew taking his time deciding his action. Is a target lock better than a focus? Decides, let's just take a focus. Can be used on both offense and defense. Who does he move next? Well, if Tarani doesn't get out of this I, i'm so looking forward to where this is there is one of the best moves that ship can do so the two sloop from uh, zuvio now has got all three ships in arc will spend that um cybernetic thing so we'll actually get an action as well and see what the action is going to be is it going to be a focus is it going to be anything yellow can't shoot 
Blue can shoot, decides taking the stress and uh, getting um, the evade is a great choice. There's a big, oh no, okay, so Tarani is not in, oh lord, and and takes, takes the focus and has a, has a prayer. That then leaves Lando to uh, bank around as far as he can this time. Um, do you give anybody anything else? That range three bubble will be kind of huge. And Lando's untouched. So you would need two damage into there for just a half. And he costs very, very little. And it manages to get um, that target lock gone. So here we go. This is it. This is for the game. Good luck to both players. Let us see where we are at. Bombs first. So uh, no need to stop the clocks. Clock has well stopped. I'm sure they are well aware of that. So not quite sure what the discussion is. Um, if we're now in here, okay, so let me just see what that is. That's uh, Tarani's lock on to um, on to Gargor. So let us see. Is that the movement done? Is that everything? Because if that is Tarani's action, then that will be the end of the movement phase and we are now into pre-engagement phase where all of these thermal detonators, they are thermals. So let's see, don't quite know what's happening here to be completely honest. But let us see, because uh, they are definitely taking their time. They coordinate away. So Tarani will only be taking two there. And will probably stay alive as long as she doesn't roll crits. Because Tarani has got a fuel leak. So that's about as good as Matthew can do. Uh, there are range one bubbles upon everything here. Oh, what a nail biter. What a nail biter. So as you can see, top of your screen, the score, 99 to 42. Fan needs 58 to lead and not lose anything. Okay, killing off Tarani will give him another 28 points. The problem with Jostero is you need to get three damage into Jostero, which could be doable. but unlikely. Oh, this is so good. This is so good. So, first bomb, there's gonna be a lot of single die red rolls going. So, fans deciding who to roll first. So this is in the Tyranny. Tyranny takes a hit. That is still okay. That is still okay. So takes one damage. Down to two. Uh, in the Jostero. Same bomb. No damage. Nothing at all. Now, this is going to hit all three. And he's probably going to do them in the same order. So Tarani first. Does not want to roll a crit but does roll another hit. So down to just one. What a brilliant game this is ending, ending up being. So Tarani lives. As you can see, I don't think that the uh, other bombs will do anything apart from maybe hitting Jostera. So let us have a look. So you're not defending. This is this is literally just 
it's not the tack, it is the the side effects of the thermals. So Gargar probably can't do anything. Um, a little bit. Surely you would just get the, the next two to go and, and see what happens. You know, the game is over, so. Put us out of our misery, we're all glued. We're all glued. I'm sure they're having a, a, a frank discussion here about uh, what's going to happen. The half points would not be enough killing Tarani. So uh, more damage is going to have to be done. And if blue goes, France have maybe got this. So uh, as I say, bear with uh, these players. Uh, all of these Decisions in the conversation that they're having, kind of big. Um, obviously, the damage card has been taken, not a crit, so fuel leak does not trigger. Nothing like a Count Dooku anywhere to be able to uh, say that is a crit and just explode it. That would have been uh, perfect for the Netherlands, but uh, not actually happening. So there are still two ships that this thermal has hit. That is Jostero and Gargor. Garbor will survive, so will Jostro, but every little helps if you are supporting the Netherlands. So, um, I can only apologize. I don't quite know why they're taking their time here, um, unless one of them is unhappy with something, at which point they will call a, a, a judge uh, through the XTC Discord, which they are more than happy to do, but they should actually call their uh tin captains first to decide what's going on so uh, in my opinion nothing has has happened here untowardly um don't see really what what the issue can be so because i have no idea and uh, you guys are slightly behind my stream So let's see um, what we're saying. Okay, so uh, you guys seem to be uh, as, as confused as I am. Um, so again, I, I hate repeating myself. Uh, the first bomb did one damage as a hit into Tyranny, no damage into Jostro. The second one, which is currently lit on your screen, did another damage in there. I'm seeing... It doesn't really matter. Oh, oh gods. Okay, so they've, uh, I think they were deciding which one Sabine would give. Uh, Baragor fine, rolling the blank. Last one from this bomb actually does do a damage into uh, he's got a shield. He's got a shield. Yep, so flip the shield. Well done. You see, these guys know what they're at. They know where they're at. So losing the shield would need two more in there to half that. So still no additional points. That thermal goes away. The one at the bottom is not going to hit anything. So this is the key one. The first one does not hit Does get him with a second after the tractor. Fan needs to see some paint. Gets a crit. That's huge. The crit is... A panicked pilot doesn't really make that much of a difference to stress. What happens to the second one? That is another damage. That is half on Jostero. Holy... Holy moly. So the panicked pilot goes there and then disappears because you just flip it over. But that's points. That's now 64. Oh, what on earth? This game is certainly not over. Certainly not. So now the actual shots. Two dead attack from Zuvio, who's rolled two hits every single time. Does not have a focus. It is one. Fan needs the paint. 
spends the focus to stay alive this turn. That is clever because his ship's still alive. However, there is a fully modded shot with a focus from Jostro. Now he needs to take blue off the board. He needs the points. He is up, but taking that off and getting another 25 points could probably, probably end the game uh, before anything else happens. So uh, Lando obviously has no shot. Tarani has no shot and is stressed. Uh, Gargor will shoot last. And I'm not too sure. Has Justro decided not to fire? So Lando is out of arc. Um, it's only one left. Um, so a two die attack here. Spend that four. Uh, that focus does needs natties. Unbelievably rolled by France. Wonder natty roll from Mathieu. And I think this could be a GG game over. I really think this could be all over range two into Jostro, range two into Zuvio. Bit of a difference in the green dice there. Fan absolutely has to try and take something off. Has to. Big, big, big decision. I don't know how. With only two, he can't get to Rami. He can half Zuvio. One damage into Zuvio was half points, but he's a very cheap ship. Then again, so is Gargor. You've already got, I believe, the half points on Jostro because he is six. So that is half points there. Let's see what he goes for. He only gets the one by spending his focus. It's a two die defense. Could be anything. It's a double blank. Spends the evade and is safe. So that shot at the end there into uh, Zuvio. Is there one more chance? Zuvio now is tokenless. Lando is tokenless. One damage into Zuvio would be enough. That is the big call. This is going to be probably the last shot of the game. So yellow K-Wing gets two hits on one of Zuvio, two green die to defend. That does not happen. No crit in there to trigger off anything. Down to just one. So a few more points there off Zuvio. Uh, a whole 19. And I think that is the game. I am pretty sure that... Um, Gargor does not have a shot. Let me spin on. He's absolutely no chance of getting in there. So that, ladies and gentlemen, of the class of X-Wing 2021 is a win. And a well-deserved win for Matthew Carbon. 99 points to 83. He pulled it back to just lose by 16. What an amazing game of X-Wing that was. Chat, thank you so much for sticking around with all the uh, early internet issues. Changing the router has helped a great, great deal. So uh, there you go. Um, that is good game. Well done, Mathieu. Uh, France showing how good a country they are. Don't... Don't sleep on the Netherlands. They can definitely, definitely uh, pull stuff back. So uh, GG, well played. Uh, commiseration, Stefan. Congratulations to Mathieu. My name is Seth Holocron from the Tauntaun Squadron YouTube channel. I hope you enjoyed that as much as I did. Uh, this will take 
because it's now live, uh, it will be up for you guys to watch at any time that you like, pretty much any time from the next three to four hours. Thank you so much for watching. Keep watching and supporting all the streamers who are giving you all the likes, so follows and subscriptions, please, for everybody. Take it easy. Hope you enjoyed it. What a bloody good guy. Bye-bye.